In this video, we're looking at 15 unique basketball cards from my collection and using them to predict the storylines that are about to unfold during this NBA season. Like what Victor Wembanyama's second season will actually look like for the Spurs, what John Morant is going to look and act like on the court and off it, and just exactly who is going to walk away with the NBA Most Valuable Player Award. But first, we're going to be talking about Jason Tatum, who I'm projecting to be an all-star starter once again. First team All-NBA, All-Star Game MVP, and I think he's going to be Finals MVP. The Celtics are going to repeat as NBA champions. I don't think the Celtics will pull the number one seed just because teams like the Knicks and the 76ers should be even better record-wise. And overall, I think the conference across the board has gotten better. So the whole talk this offseason as Team USA made their gold medal run uh, with Jason Tatum was that ultimately he just, you know, was not good enough to stay on the floor when the games mattered the most. He was benched several times by head coach Steve Kerr, and that just really just every time it served as an opportunity for a lot of not only Boston media and fans, like local people to kind of gang up on Jason Tatum, but the national media too, to a certain degree, um, has really just kind of taken a negative stance on Jason Tatum. And People, it's so quick to see just like how quickly, you know, like granted he didn't win finals MVP despite his team having one of the best playoff runs ever in the history of modern NBA. Like that is absolutely a crazy achievement as a team. And it should almost be kind of scary in the sense of if he could underperform from one aspect of his game like shooting and the Celtics could win with relative ease throughout the entire regular season and playoffs, I think the league should be kind of scared in that sense. I think the interesting part as it relates to Jalen Brown, the money man in the NBA, it's been stupid. The fact that you can even have these two players on one team, not 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 to mention Drew Holiday and um, you know, of course, Kristaps Porzingis, Derek White, like all the money this team is just dishing out is absolutely insane. Like we're coming up on a quarter of a billion dollars just to um field uh, your starting five. So absolute nuts and i think at some point you know the uh uh something's got to give and it feels like the writing is on the wall with jalen brown and the great thing though is for jalen brown and what he means to the celtics and his nba legacy like uh i think it's really he has finals mvp and an nba championship um as that proof of hey whatever you try want to try and say about my weaknesses and um you know my fit with other superstars in the league and anything to do with what you are, who you are off the court as well. Cause Jalen Brown being a very vocal and very, um, you know, he, he has his hands in so many different projects and initiatives. He has ruffled feathers, ruffling feathers historically in the world of sports um, has been a, a way that you can transcend and become an even more iconic figure. So I just would really hope that he can continue his career as a Boston Celtic being a Celtics fan. I don't think it's going to happen. I think something's going to give and a trade is probably going to be inevitable. And my hope is that it's going to be something that is kind of uh, in the interest of both parties and it's an amicable split. That's my prediction for the season after uh, after this season's the uh, the defense. I think they're going to win back-to-back -back titles. The Celtics are going to be the second seed. And uh, the 76ers are going to be the number one seed is what I'm guessing. And uh, the Eastern Conference is overall being more competitive. We're going to see some really cool opening round series and second round semifinal series. I think the conference finals is going to be 76ers and Celtics. I think there's an outside chance that it could be Celtics and Knicks. And ultimately, I'll say in a minute who I think is going to represent the West. But um, at least for now, to just kind of reference most recently, the NBA Western Conference champions, Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, I think we're poised to see two of the best, if not the two best statistical seasons from both of these guys. And I think what that means is Luka Doncic is going to win his very first MVP, what we, a lot of people had expected this past season. I think it is going to happen this time around. I think we're going to eventually see over the first couple of months of the season, people are going to take notice of the work that Luka mentally and physically has had to put in after getting so close and coming up 
you know, actually in a pretty drastic way, like, uh, you know, being not embarrassed, but really being exposed of like they did all they could. And, you know, that was what they could muster up. But ultimately, the Celtics just being too good. He's got to work on his defensive mindset and uh, just his own mentality throughout games and maybe not be too whiny and reliant on drawing fouls. Kyrie Irving, I think he is also back with a vengeance in terms of um, not playing from negativity, but seeing like, hey, you know, this was one great season. We did even more than what we had expected and wanted to do. And now another year of him proving, hey, he's still one of the most skilled and gifted point guards in NBA history. And he's only 30, 31. He still has a lot of good basketball left in him. And I think ultimately the Mavericks are number two seed. I don't think they're going to make the NBA Finals again. Instead, I actually think it's going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. I think the Thunder are going to be the representatives in the NBA Finals in 2025. I don't think they're going to be the number one seed. I actually have them somewhere at three and four. I think in the West, the Nuggets will be the number one seed. Nikola Jokic coming back and just absolutely dominating. And I think making uh, you know pretty decent work of a, a lot of the meddling teams uh, in the Western Conference, like I think of the New Orleans Pelicans, Zion Williamson, who is coming up at some point in this video as well. And uh, I, I just think uh, there's a lot of teams that aren't really going to be able to keep it consistent throughout the year. Whereas the Nuggets, even if they've been losing key contributors like KCP, um, you know, little little parts of their overall top seven. Uh, I just ultimately think you have the best basketball player on the planet right now. And uh, you still have him in one of his prime years. So I think they're going to be the number one seed. I think they're going to make the West Finals, but ultimately fall short of the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are going to beat them in seven games, make it to the NBA Finals. They'll ultimately lose to the Boston Celtics in six games. That's what I'm projecting on August 15th. Um, pending that both both rosters are healthy and not accounting for potential major moves that could change that. But that's what I'm locking in right now. Next up, these cards you're seeing now, Victor Wembenyama and the fate of the San Antonio Spurs. That being very much one of the main storylines, especially to Team France over the summer in the Olympics, silver medal after a classic game against Team USA. Steph Curry really taking over with LeBron and KD down the stretch. Victor Wembenyama is poised to have one of the most impressive seasons ever. And there's not even a caveat there because I really just mean with how special his rookie year was and the opportunity before him and what I think maybe even a one contributor like Devin Vassell and potentially Kelvin Johnson, there's young talent around him that I think with another year of growth and discipline mentally and physically, Victor Wembanyama is going to take the San Antonio Spurs to the seventh seed. That's right. I think they're going to just barely... Uh, you know, barely miss not having to be in the play-in tournament, but they'll have one of the top positions there. If they can win their first game, they'll have final spot uh, in the playoffs, but if not, they'll have to kind of win at least another one. So, um, but I think we're going to see a special defensive player of the year run for Victor Wembanyama. And my guess, my prediction that I think is furthest out there and maybe is unlikely is probably going to be other contenders for most improved player. I'm locking in Devin Vassell because I think there's going to be a points per game jump from somewhere in the late teens, which is what he is at now, to 24, 25. And if it transcends to winning and they make a playoff run, I mean, that's kind of, a I think, what the modern interpretation of most improved player is. It's who was not necessarily considered a star that has ascended statistically and has led to an impact on the court. Tyrese Maxey being a great, great example recently. It made the point per game jump. You saw and felt the difference, and the team played better and made the playoffs. That's what I'm guessing there. And John Morant, a very unfortunate tale over the past year. And for some quick context, just on like the sales front, the two John Morant cards you're seeing, I bought raw, had them both graded, and there was a very small window of time when he return from the suspension uh, in 2023 in that season um, I had an opportunity to sell these cards pretty high and then he got injured he injured his shoulder was out for the rest of the season and now coming back to a Grizzlies team that man they really have underperformed the past couple of years um, and uh, really specifically it's been a matter of not having their best player available throughout the most important parts of the season so 
I think there's a lot of pressure on John Morant's shoulder. No pun intended. I actually didn't mean that. Uh, I think there is a lot of pressure on his shoulder to come back and perform. Thankfully, he's got former Celtic legend Marcus Smart um, as a potential backup and mentor figure. I hope they can turn it around. But I think this is a case where the West is so competitive and so stacked. I think they're going to ultimately either barely make the play in or just fall short. I think it's going to be too much for them to come back. My ultimate prediction with John Morant is by the end of the season, sometime in the playoffs or in the offseason, John Morant is going to demand a trade. I think it's ultimately going to be the end of John Morant as a Memphis Grizzly. I think so much has happened to him publicly, his public image, and so much has been um, not achieved. And after another season of disappointment, the, the Grizzlies go on to miss the playoffs like I think they're going to. Uh, ultimately, what that means is uh, I think both parties are going to probably want to try and split bait. And uh, I think John Morant's still going to play a majority of the season, so there's going to be some value there. And his contract, while being big, it's the standard going rate of a star, a superstar in the NBA. So there will be suitors out there for him. I hope these cards are worth more by the end of the season, but by my projections, I don't see it. So for LeBronathan James, I only have this. I have two of these types of $15 to $25 um, graded PSA cards of LeBron. Not rookie, of course. Something in the 2019-2020 range. This one is a select red, white, orange shimmer, nine. It's nothing too special. I honestly think these are just going to be cards that I hang on to. And if I go to a show and someone wants to buy it for like the higher end, like 25, 30 bucks, I'd consider letting it go. But I have no urgency to sell this, especially right now. I think by the end of the season, there's a real chance that we'll see LeBron James walk away and retire. I don't think he's going to be one to want to uh, have the retirement tour, especially with how much extra attention he's going to get this season with playing with Bronny, his son. So I, I think this is going to be the surprise end of LeBron James' career. That's my prediction for this season. I mentioned Zion Williamson briefly earlier, and this is unfortunately one of the only two or three remaining Zion Williamson cards I have. It's not a rookie. I did own probably a couple of hundred dollars at least worth of Zion Williamson graded rookie cards, but I sold during this past season because I don't personally believe that him as a New Orleans Pelican is going to work out anymore. And I think the team that he's going to end up on, which is maybe out there, but I think has been on, the writing has been on the wall for quite some time. I think the New York Knicks are going to be contenders for Zion Williamson by the end of this season, the beginning of next off season. Uh, the Nova Knicks climbing Mount Zion. Pause. That's what I think is an inevitable. Julius Randle just being an obvious salary match. Uh, just one player that you can base a lot of Zion's value and a return off of. There's a lot of parts on both sides that you can use to fill and make make sense. So I, I just think Zion Williamson, man, it's he truly has so much potential, but his body type and what it's going to take for the players around him and how a team would need to even build around a player in a body type like that, I, it's so hard to really in practice build a team for the long run that can be competitive with Zion Williamson as your number one. So I, I almost wonder if dropping someone like Zion Williamson into a system, something that is already kind of consistent with his bully ball aggressive style where he doesn't need to take threes, he just needs to go out there for a certain amount of minutes, provide his energy and bring some intense in, intensity to the offensive end and just put an effort in, right? So I think there's a lot of potential there. It's kind of scary to think of like having Jalen Brunson, having Josh Hart, having Dante DiVincenzo, Mikhail Bridges, and then you drop in a Zion Williamson. Like that is a scary lineup. My take on Joel Embiid, and uh, it's really unfortunate. I think we're going to see the last MVP caliber year of Joel Embiid. If he makes the 65 game requirement, I think he's going to he's gonna win MVP. I think uh, we're probably not going to see 65 on the nose. I think. The talent around him with having Paul George now, another year of Tyrese Maxey, they have a really good rotation of players that if they don't over-rely on Joel Embiid for a lot of minutes and a lot of games, I still think they can have a route to the number one seed, which is my prediction. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing if you aren't already and watching this video right here. I've been told by the algorithm that not only am I an AI, but also this video is best chosen for you. So maybe it'll be worth clicking on it. Oh yeah, and as for Lonzo Ball, I think he's gonna come back, he's gonna dance, hit the gritty or something, and Stephen A. Smith will be pissed.